This is The Bottom Line. Hello, I'm Cheryl Tan, in for Don Roberts. So, what's the bottom line? Some good news. <laughs> he is a grown man now and successful by any standard. And now, he's reaching back to thank one of his teachers. And they were bitter rivals in high school, but now, 40 years later, they're finally putting their differences aside. Today, on The Bottom Line. Good morning, and thanks for joining us for The Bottom Line. I'm Cheryl Tan, in for Don Roberts. You and your child may be coming off of a not-so-good school year. Do you want 2012-2013 to be better? And if so, what's your plan? My first two guests have some suggestions, and they're offering the tips in a rather unique way. They're based on their experiences as a student, now psychologist Dr. Adolph Brown, and his third grade teacher, Susan Tolley. She has written a book about him. Well, we were speaking in Florida, and a little girl came up to Doc, and she could not get enough of him. She was grabbing onto him, going, Doc, Doc, Dockity Doc, Doc, Doc. And she just wouldn't let go. And I was, I was watching her and watching the other children. And Doc is so good in front of children. I mean, he's wonderful. And all they wanted was a piece of him. They, I mean, literally were grabbing onto him. And when we left, we were talking. And I said, you know, Doc, you've got a number of books for adults that he's written that I proofed. <laughs> but you don't have anything for children. I said, you know, maybe you need to write a book for children. And he said, okay, do it. So I came home and did it. And it's the story of his life. I know now we were poor, but I didn't much know it when I was a kid. My mother was always cheerful. She woke me up every morning saying, it's going to be a great day. Then one day, it wasn't a great day. Two men came to our door and told my mama that my older brother, Oscar, had been killed. Uh, I lost my brother at 11 years old at a time which I, I needed him quite badly. My father and mother divorced when I was two, and I didn't see my father again until I was 18. So I had some issues as um, an elementary schooler. And when I needed my brother most, he was my hero. Um, he was killed. That isn't as unique as you may think it is. Loss is rampant among today's children, whether it be physical or literal loss. I mean, children have parents that are incarcerated. Children have parents that have, that have died have parents that have divorced. And it's, like I said, it's not always things that you can see that are so obvious. There's some children who have parents that are addicted to drugs. That's a loss. They're not the best parent that they can be. Or parent with an untreated mental illness. So that loss, I overcame. How? Well, I had a third grade teacher that cared about me. It came from home, from a mother who believed in me, who, who woke me up every day saying, it's going to be a great day. A mother who worked three and four jobs to make ends meet. These, these are the things that are related, are communicated in this book. Everyone's out here talking about achievement gap. It didn't start with achievement. It started with relationships. What you see here is a relationship. You know, without significant relationships, significant learning does not take place. So you, this is a relationship that someone formed with me, someone who said to this inner city child in third grade who was poor, whose dad wasn't in his life, who was angry, who said poverty is not a disability and treated me as such. Someone who told me that you're in my class now. I recognize that you had a great second grade teacher. She put you in my class. But you're here now, and you're going to make it. I'm going to ensure that you make it together. together. Great story, and he has. 
Dr. Adolph Brown, along with his third grade teacher and now author, Susan Tolley. Here's how you can get in touch with them. Just call Dr. Adolph Brown at his office at Wellness International in Virginia Beach. The number on your screen, 757-486-9686. You can reach both he and Susan Tolley there, or you can go to Dr. Brown's website, docspeaks.com. You can also order the book through the website or amazon.com. Dr. Adolph Brown is a father of five children, and he echoes the mission of our next guest to get more fathers more invested in their child's education. And Dr. Princella Johnson of Y2K Academy in Suffolk asks that a father simply takes their child to school on the very first day of class. Dr. Johnson is hosting a rally and simply a day of fun for families coming up on Saturday, August 18th. The main goal to get the man to take his child to school on the first day. Dr. West says this actually is the third annual Fathers as First Teachers Gospel Family Fest. The relationship between fathers and their children are phenomenal. We know that fathers can actually speak into a child the goal and identity, and a child will go after that target. Whereas children, they love us as mothers, but when a dad says, son, this is what I want you to become, this is what I'd like for you to do, children feel a challenge with making their fathers proud. And so we, we want to see fathers reading with their children, taking them to school, helping with homework, and letting them them know that they are important, their education is important. And we think once we get those dads together and the kids see that their fathers know that the education is important, it will make an impact on our children. Y2K Academy is sponsoring the third annual Fathers as First Teachers on the First Day of School Gospel Family Fest. We're going to be at Three Sisters Berry Farms, Epps Farm Supply in Suffolk. We're having a rally there, and we're trying to mobilize 700 dads from the seven cities that will be there to take their kids back to school. We are going to have a phenomenal list of activities this year. We're going to have a horse show. We will have horses there for the children to get free horse rides. We're going to have games galore, games, board games, and, and fun games, running games, all types of games. We will also have the office of the Attorney General there. They will be doing an anti-gang seminar for parents to let them know if a gang is trying to recruit their child into a gang. Also, we've got some wonderful gospel music artists that will be there. Dolores DDG, she will be there singing. We have got the chosen few from Newport News. The Gates of Heaven praise team. We'll have also the Victory Temple Choir out of Windsor, North Carolina. So it's going to be a phenomenal phenomenal event, everything. But I want you to tell you about a very special event for the little kids. We're going to have a puppet show. We're going to have a puppet show called the uh, Roman Road Puppet Show Group. And the kids are going to love this puppet show. It's for fun, family, free food, free backpacks, 100 backpacks will be given away, and 200 pairs of shoes. The Y2K Academy rally to get fathers to take their children to school on the first day takes place Saturday, August 18th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Epps Farm Supply on Joshua Lane in Suffolk. For more information, you can call 757-925-4545 or go to the website y2kacademy.webs.com. Well, men, it's time to get over it, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Next on the bottom line, three men you need to hear from who urge you to get over your fear of embarrassment at the doctor's office. Welcome back to The Bottom Line. There's a quote from Proverbs, often used to put someone's ego in check. And to use the King James Version, it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. That thought parallels concerns some have about some people we all know who don't want to get a certain medical exam because they're uncomfortable with what the doctor has to do to you. Well, my next guests need you to get over that discomfort in an effort to possibly save your life. They're inviting you to a health symposium in Norfolk. Um, I was uh, myself uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, a few years ago and uh, fortunately I was involved in uh, 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 forums like this that uh, impressed upon me the importance of, uh, of early detection and my outcome was just very, very positive. But I think a lot of men are reluctant to do that uh, uh, because again they, they, they have uh, some 
there's a bit of misinformation out there uh, in terms of uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, in terms of um, the uh, digital rectal exam, you know, because a lot of men uh, uh, can't fathom another man uh, uh, giving them that digital rectal exam. And, and what I have always <laughs> shared with them that if you think it's all well for you, think about what the doctor is going through. The doctor doesn't necessarily want to do that, but the doctor realizes how important it is for, for his uh, patient's health. Uh, so there, there are a variety. There are probably a host of reasons that uh, men are reluctant to, uh, to get the, the necessary prostate cancer screenings. Um, I know of one gentleman who, because he didn't know his prostate cancer history, uh, he w was detected uh, with prostate cancer at the age of 38. You know, so, you know, the, 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 the golden rule, uh, the standard is, you know, 40 to 45 years old. Uh, but there, you know, I, I think if you are proactive uh, and, and uh, uh, have some awareness of your family history especially, that it can be very impactful and very insightful uh, in terms of how, how you can uh, manage your own health care. Okay. I've seen that time and time again where you have people who ignore that the blood pressure is high, think that they're fine. And I like the title, The Cloak of Invincibility, because they tend to think that I am invincible and I don't need to get checked out. But you do, because as you get older, it's going to have a detrimental effect on you. And our involvement uh, is from the standpoint of trying to help African American men understand the importance of screening, particularly for prostate cancer uh, screening. Uh, African American males have a much higher rate of prostate cancer in this country, and Hampton Roads has the highest incident of death, highest death rates for prostate cancer in the country. And so we are involved because we want African American men to empower themselves to go and get screened of those that are in the higher risk rate. Uh, risk uh, age, ages uh, above 40 years old and also to understand that you know they have to own that that responsibility and we want you know uh, the women that attend to, to also because in most households women are the per are the persons who take the responsibility for everyone's health care to encourage their you know, their spouses and significant others to go and get tested and screened. And, uh, the event is called Illuminating Good Health, Eliminating the Cloak of Invisibility, African American Men's Health Symposium. It's your chance to hear from and talk to professionals about any questions you may have, especially if you're a black male. The symposium will feature participants from the Norfolk Department of Public Health, the Centera Cancer Network, the Hampton Roads Prostate Health Forum, the American Diabetes Association, and many more. To find out more on this, you can call Terrence. Afer Anderson at the Norfolk Health Department. His number is 757-683-8836 or you can log on to their Facebook page and click like right there at the top of the page. Frightening numbers now about the amount of veterans here in Hampton Roads and around the nation for that matter. Men and women who've served our country put their lives on the line for our freedoms. Problem is, too many of those men and women are separating the services, only to find they have to fight new battles in civilian life. Well, the Norfolk chapter of Disabled American Veterans is ready to help. The DAV's two ranking officers tell me you can reach that helping hand by simply taking a walk in the park, the site for the upcoming service delivery fair. We would like to have uh, as many folks from the community as possible to come out and just have a good time with us. And by doing that, uh, in the background, they're going to be doing something amazing. What that actually is, is they're going to be helping us to end veteran homelessness for veterans. There are too many homeless veterans on the street. Statistically, one in three homeless persons is a veteran. And we would like to end that in Hampton Roads and then set a model where we can end that throughout the country. And let me explain how that's going to happen. We're going to, uh, or we are already in the process actually, of establishing some transitional housing for veterans. We also help veterans to access their benefits. The combination of these two allows a homeless veteran to have an income and a place to stay to reestablish themselves and then we help them to transition into permanent supportive housing. All of this costs, we do it all for free to, for the veterans, but we're asking for the community to help us raise money to uh, do this by simply coming out to our service delivery fair and having a good time. We're going to have uh, live music, uh, several different bands are coming in, we're going to have a DJ, we're trying to arrange a comedian, um, might be you, um, 
where we are, we've arranged for um, one of our sponsors to bring out a flight simulator. There's going to be lots and lots and lots of fun out there. And as the commander said, this is going to ultimately help all the homeless veterans in this area. So if you, even if you've never served in the in the military, but you've always wanted to be able to do something to help veterans, especially homeless veterans, this is the way to do it. The fifth annual Norfolk DAV Service Delivery Fair is set for Saturday, September 8th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Lafayette Park in Norfolk. Here's a phone number for more information, 757-857-5056. And here's how to connect with other veterans and with the services you as a veteran may need. The 5th Annual Veterans Service Delivery Fair is Saturday, September 8th, 10A to 7P at Norfolk's Lafayette Park. For more information, you can call the Norfolk Chapter of Disabled American Veterans, number 4. That's in Norfolk, 757-857, once again, 5056. And it seems veterans are everywhere in Hampton Roads, and I'll bet each one has a unique story to tell. During a recent stop to his favorite big box store, Don met with William Bill Shin Jr. The Gloucester resident is a Vietnam veteran, and Shin says he's benefited from the helping hands of others, so now he's ready to give back. Uh, yes, I did. I did uh, 1966. I was there for a few months in a short time. And I was uh, seriously wounded with the landmine. So wow. They met us out there. That was on July the 4th. And as I've told you, I like to make a joke of it, but I was reborn on the 4th of July because I had a cardiac arrest and it brought me back. So I always say that, but that's my first step. All right. Now tell me about the Marine Corps League one more time and why somebody should get involved in it. Okay, well, the Marine Corps League, like I said, is a nonprofit organization. It was chartered by the United States government in 1933. We, we, you have detachments all over the country. It, it's, uh, you have a national, which covers everything. Uh, what we do is uh, each, each detachment is a little bit different. They do their own thing, but most all of us do raffles and uh, cooking and whatever to raise money to give back to these Marines and, and sailors. Uh, at Christmas time, uh, Thanksgiving, we gave 16 Marine Corps families um, $75 each to do turkey dinners to make sure they had it. Actually, Farm Fresh work mm -hmm. was on that. Uh, we did the same thing Christmas. We gave 16 or 18 families. So it, it cost us thousands of dollars to do these things, but uh, we worked very hard to do it. And we need help all the time. We need more, more members. And if you're a Marine or FMF uh, corpsman, come see us. Or That's Bill Shin from the Middle Peninsula Detachment 1317. To find out more, about the Marine Corps League or to reach Bill Shin, you can email him at this address, wshin at cox.net, or call him at 804-642-4889. Up next, a high school reunion, 40 years in the making. And this one is pretty unique. It features former students from not one, but two schools, and they were bitter rivals. You'll hear why history is a factor in their joint reunion. And members of a community that often make headlines because of crime, they say it's time to celebrate what's good in their neighborhood. Details of the Southeast Community Day celebration after a break. Welcome back. It's hard to believe it's been some 40 years since court-ordered integration of Virginia schools finally took effect. And in Newport News, integration meant the closure of traditionally black high schools George Washington Carver and Collis P. Huntington. The black community took that pretty hard and it was probably most difficult on the students, the juniors, who, after three years at Huntington and Carver, would not be allowed to graduate from those he schools. In this one I think Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. Now, 40 years later, it's time for a reunion, and members of these once bitter rival schools have decided to do something that was unheard of until recently, and that is to put their rivalries aside and come together in a joint high school reunion. <laughs> is that you? Right here? Right yeah, here. Right here. <laughs> okay, my name is Lindia Johnson, and I am really proud. 
to say that I was a Carver student. As a Huntingtonian, all through the years, it was a major thing to finally get to your senior year as a Huntington Viking. I was looking forward to being the valedictorian or salutatorian. Oh, we, we actually were two rival schools in Huntington and Carver, but we were one community, really. There you go, baby. There you are. <laughs> Back when we were in high school together, it was a delicious rivalry. Uh, and it was a, a very intense rivalry also. And in late 1971, for the Huntington students, well into the summer, that was the first time that we were informed that we would not be able to graduate from Huntington. We were divided three ways between Warwick, Ferguson, and Minchville High School. It was a kept secret that we were going to be bused. For your senior year, it's difficult to make it through that year when you're in a brand new environment. And it's, it was a political uh, background to that. There were a lot of hurt feelings. I went to Warwick and uh, I just wanted the year to come to an end and graduate. I think I was the first black person in the ranking. I was number 14. It's been 40 years. 40 years. Why do you feel it's important to get together now? Well, it's 40 years, and, you know, at the time when, when we were split up, you know, there was a lot of hurt feelings. It's time to be healed. Uh, but now we are grandparents, and it's a time right now, particularly in this nation, where we feel that people need to come together. And we believe that this could be a rallying point for the uh, Peninsula community to show if two rivals can come together, anybody can come together. The Carver-Huntington Missing Class of 1972 will hold its reunion August 31st, September 1st, and September 2nd at the Crown Plaza Hotel. And finally, an annual celebration of community spirit is in the works as we speak. It's the annual Southeast Community Day happening during Labor Day weekend. It's sponsored by the Peninsula Chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Southeast Community Day Parade and Festival is a festival that's held annually every year the second week of September, and it's pretty much about building a stronger community throughout the city. Southeast Community Day is not just for the Southeast community. We want all citizens throughout the whole city of Newport News to be a part of this. We have all the different high school bands. We have rec league football teams. We have cheerleaders. We have car shows. We have all the Southeast Day festivities kick off Friday with a luncheon at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Hampton. Saturday, the Southeast Community Day Parade kicks off at 10 Sunday. There will also be events as well. That is the bottom line. You can see the show again at wavy.com. Just click on the community tab. Thanks.